There was a time where only one Korea existed. In the simpler times, North and South were just but directions on a compass and not two countries that couldn't seem to agree on the tiniest of issues. The demilitarized zone was basically non-existent as the peninsula was unified under a single cultural and political identity. This was until 1945 when suddenly Korea was split into two. In today's video, we'll be looking into why this was the case for Korea, figuring out the historical, political and ideological forces that led to this significant split. But before we get into that, be sure to subscribe as I post interesting content daily that you won't want to miss. Let's go. The end of World War II brought with it a lot of changes, be it political, geopolitical or economical. The global landscape was largely transformed. We saw the emergence of nations previously under European rule finally seek independence the collapse of fascist regimes in Germany, Italy and Japan, paving the way for democratic governance in these nations. The formations of military alliances such as NATO and much more. But one of these changes that had a profound and lasting impact was the division of territories and the creation of new political boundaries such as the division of Korea along the 38th parallel. Before 1945, Korea had been under the Japanese colonial rule since 1910. The Japanese, under the authority of Emperor Meiji, sought to extend their influence and control over the Korean peninsula as part of their imperialistic ambitions in East Asia. Motivated by Korea's rich natural resources and strategic geographical location, Japan established control over the nation. Consequently, by the onset of World War II, Japan had firmly established its presence in Korea, thus it was only natural for Korea to plead allegiances to its colonizers. Then came the war. During the war, the then President of the United States, President Roosevelt, committed to Korean exile politicians, among them Ri Seung man who later on became the first President of South Korea. That happened after the elite forces had won World War II. Korea would become an independent country again. But sadly, President Roosevelt didn't live long enough to see the elite forces win. He died in 1945 of a cerebral hemorrhage, just months before Japan's surrender in September of the same year. His replacement, President Truman, wasn't aware of Roosevelt's promise to the Koreans and thus, during the conference of Potsdam, has made his own new arrangements with Stalin, the implications of which did not include Korea's return to the people. The arrangement was that the Soviets would undertake the responsibility of engaging the Japanese and overseeing the surrender of the Japanese army on mainland Asia, while the United States would manage the surrender of the Japanese army in Japan itself. Unfortunately, the US approach to Korea differed significantly from other territories affected by Japanese occupation during World War II. Unlike places like the Philippines, where the US viewed Japan occupation as an external aggression, Korea was perceived as an integral part of Japan since its annexation in 1910. This perception tragically influenced the US policy towards Korea, leading to its exclusion from consideration of liberation and independence following Japan's defeat. Thus, the US troops and Soviet army came together at nearby 38 degrees latitude. The Soviets claimed to be on mainland Asia, while the US thought to be in Japan. To solve this mistake, the US commander suddenly ordered two young officers to define a border to separate the region of influence of both armies. The problem was that both of them had no knowledge of Korea, and their only point of reference was a National Geographic map. With time running out, the two men hastily decided the 38th parallel as the boundary, thus effectively splitting Korea into two halves. It was a completely hasty decision imposed on Korea by two men who had no idea of the place, nor did they consult any experts on Korea. Their only point was that south of the 38th parallel, Seoul would come under American control. Surprisingly enough, the Soviets accepted this and that's how the North and South Korea were born. This division was initially intended to be temporary and meant to facilitate the surrender of Japanese forces in Korea and the eventual establishment of a unified Korean government. However, as the Cold War intensified and ideological differences between the Soviet Union and the United States deepened, efforts to establish a unified Korean government failed. In 1948, separate governments were established in the North under Soviet influence and the South under American influence, leading to the formal division of Korea into North Korea, Democratic People's Republic of Korea and South Korea, Republic of Korea. This was further solidified by the outbreak of the Korean War in 1950, when North Korea invaded South Korea, leading to a prolonged conflict that ended in a truce in 1953. Since then, North and South Korea have remained separate countries with a heavily fortified border between them, known as the Korean Delimitarized Zone, DMZ. If you like the content, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.